Working remote is awesome. I get to wake up, run to my computer, get work done. Then for lunch, I get to eat amazing food. And after work, I get to go to the beach and enjoy whatever country I happen to be in. Fortunately, these days, there are a ton of jobs that will allow you to work remote, and a lot of them tend to be high paying. And many of them don't require a college degree or previous experience. And in this video, I'm gonna present 10 of the most common and best ones that I've found. And some of these jobs have the potential to make you more than a business owner. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the easiest one for you to possibly get into. Into, it's also going to be one of the lowest paying and that is customer service representative. Now I think everybody knows what this is. People might call into a company because they're having problems with a product or a service or they need technical support and you help them. Now this one is probably going to be the least desirable one that you hear on the list. Uh, you're going to have to deal with Karen's all day for instance but the reason I kept it on the list is because of the fact that it's probably the easiest to land. Just about anybody can land a job doing customer service within a few weeks or a month and this is typically a job that can be done Done remote or fully remote. And by the way, the difference between remote jobs and fully remote jobs is that remote, you typically do have to be within a certain area. So yes, you can work from your home or you can work from a coffee shop, but they might require that you're within the city or within the state or the country. Fully remote jobs, on the other hand, give you the ability to work anywhere in the world as long as you can do the job during the times that they tell you to. So if you're somebody who wants to travel the world, you'd want to go for a fully remote job. And customer service representatives or customer care support, they're going to make around $39,000, $40,000 a year. So it's not great, but at the same time, it is a job you can land really quickly. And then once you land it, you can start looking for better ones. Overall, I'm going to give this one a five out of 10 when it comes to the money score. Next one on the list is going to be a human resource assistant. Now, of course, you'd start off as a human resource assistant, and then eventually you might work into the higher level HR roles, which tend to be really well paying. And human resources is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, you're going to be helping with hiring people, firing people, uh, making sure that everyone is compliant. And according to LinkedIn, 85% of HR professionals claim that they can work effectively with a remote arrangement. Now, human resource assistants do make about $45,000 a year, so it's a little bit better. This one I'm going to give a 4 out of 10 when it comes to the money score. Next one on the list is a sales development representative, and this is one I've talked about quite a bit on this channel. Another name for this one is business development representative, and this is essentially a tech sales role. And what SDRs and BDRs focus on is not so much closing sales, but they focus on prospecting and getting leads. So they connect with as many people as they possibly can. A lot of the time that's going to be through email or LinkedIn, and then they would pass those people off to more experienced salesmen. Now, this is a role where I've interviewed people on this channel where they have literally gotten a job in two weeks. I think the craziest interview I did was with Della. She got a job in about a month and a half and she was making over $100,000 a year. Like imagine that she literally went from a stay at home mom with no experience to making over $100,000 a year in a month and a half. That is the kind of opportunity that you see as an SDR. And typically they will leave you to your own devices, but you have to perform. This is not one of those roles where you can just show up to work, you know, do maybe an hour or two of work and then, you know, you're done. This is one of those roles where you absolutely have to perform. But with that being said, SDRs make about $78,000 a year. There's also a ton of room for moving into other positions that pay even better. It's also one of the most valuable skills you can learn in general. Um, almost all billionaires say that they had some sort of sales role in their background, and there's probably a reason for that. This one gets a 10 out of 10 money score. Next one on the list is going to be an accounts receivable specialist. And basically with this role, you're gonna be taking care of all sorts of different invoices or past due payments. And in some cases, you might help to negotiate contracts as well. So somebody was supposed to pay for some sort of service that you gave them, they're six months past due, a year past due, you would be reaching out to them and telling them, hey, you need to pay this. If you don't pay it, it's going to start compounding. And if you don't pay it after a certain amount of time, we're going to have to send it to a debt collection agency. Now, this is another one of those roles where you can very easily work remotely. There's pretty much no reason why you would ever have to come into the office for this one. Accounts receivable specialists make about $45,000 a year. There are other roles that you can move into that pay much better than that. Also, depending on the industry or the company that you work for, you can get paid a lot more. But yeah, this one, I'm going to go ahead and give it a five out of 10 money score. Next one on the list is going to be 
an email marketing assistant. Now this is one where you would start off as an assistant learning email marketing and helping experienced email marketers, but eventually you would move into higher level roles. And I can tell you right now, email marketing is one of the most valuable skills that you can learn. I think I've heard estimates that for every $1 that's spent on email marketing, you get 30 to $35 back. And those estimates are actually on the lower side. So of course you have to do the work, right? You have to create the content in order to market via email, but it is incredibly lucrative. Typically, if you even get like, you know, a dollar 20 back, if you spend $1 for many businesses, that's actually going to be worth it. So if we're talking about getting 30, 40 X back on your money, that is why this skill is so valuable. Now, email marketing assistants make about $53,000 a year. So that's pretty good for something you can get into relatively easily right off the bat. This also does fall under the umbrella of digital marketing, which is something that I have talked about quite a bit on this channel. Digital marketing is one of the best skills you can learn and one of the best careers you can get into, especially at the entry level. And as I've mentioned before, my friend Seth is probably the best in the world at getting people digital marketing jobs. I'll put a link to his free masterclass down in the description, as well as the pinned comment below. He's going to go over the different types of digital marketing and the best ways to get into them. So overall, I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10 when it comes to the money score. Next one on the list is going to be a junior underwriter. Now what junior underwriters do is they basically review loan applications and make sure that the information on those applications is correct. So not only are you making sure that the application itself is correct, but you're also making sure that the person who applied is telling the truth, right? So there's a little bit of kind of private investigator stuff going on here. Like you are going to kind of look into to the person and make sure that if they say they're making $100,000 a year, they actually are. So junior underwriters make about $64,000 a year. This is one you can get into relatively easily. And it's one that you can oftentimes do remotely. There's really no reason you have to be in an office for this one. And a lot of businesses will let people work remote. So this one overall, I am going to give an eight out of 10. Next one on the list is going to be a quality assurance analyst. This is another one I've talked about on this channel. It can be a phenomenal career to get into. And basically, your job here is to make sure that there are not going to be any bugs or identify problems that might happen in software before they actually happen or if they do actually get out to the customer to fix it as quickly as possible so for instance for some reason over the last six months my bank account whenever I log in on my online portal will not let me transfer money from one account to the other clearly my bank has not hired enough quality assurance analysts because I have to do everything on my phone instead of logging in on my computer but anyways quality assurance analysts make about 60 $8,000 a year. So this is a super valuable position. And the reason it's so valuable is not only does it help a company get products out faster. So for instance, maybe you get a product out a week or a month faster, which could possibly make you millions more dollars. But on top of that, it's going to decrease churn because customers get incredibly annoyed when stuff doesn't work. When software is malfunctioning or there's bugs and stuff like that, a lot of customers are just going to go to a competitor. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this one a nine out of 10 on the money score. And the next one is very similar to quality assurance analyst, and that is quality assurance data engineer. And they basically do very similar things, but they work specifically with data, which requires a certain skill set. So if you're working with data, you're going to have to really know your stuff when it comes to statistics. And there's usually specific types of software you're going to have to be very proficient with. So quality assurance data engineers make about $79,000 a year. This one is a little bit more difficult to get into, but super valuable one. This one also gets a nine out of 10 money score. Next one on the list is going to be a webinar producer. Now this is one you've probably never heard of. Basically, this is very similar to an event planner or an event coordinator, but they do it with online events. So running a webinar, especially if there is a bunch of different people that are speaking and there's hundreds or thousands of people that are watching you live can be very stressful. And not only do you want to take care of the technical side of things, aka making sure everything is running smoothly, but on the other side, you also want to make sure that the people who are watching the webinar have a good experience. And of course, this one can be done remotely. And webinar producers earn about $66,000 a year on average. This one, I'm going to give a nine out of 10 money score. Next one, on the list is a medical assistant. So this is another one where you can get into relatively easily, sometimes with a short certification process. And there are certain types of medical assistant jobs that can be done remotely. So for instance, calling people to remind them to take their medications, uh, calling people to remind them to go to their doctor's appointments, etc. And this is actually one of the fastest growing jobs, according to BLS. It's growing at about 29% over the next 10 years. And medical assistants make about $38,000 a year. Now, I'll be honest with 
with you, the entry level jobs aren't going to be one of the better ones on the list, but I do see a lot of higher paying jobs popping up down the line. And I also wanted to include this one to show you that it's not just business, technology, entertainment, marketing, etc. type jobs that you can do remote, even medical jobs you can do remote sometimes. So for instance, before I quit my job as a pharmacist, there were times when I was working remote. So I'll give this one a five out of 10 when it comes to the money score. Check this video out right here. I made it just for you. Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. And I will see you next time.